I'm Charles Bartlett from the University of Delaware. Now I have two I'd like to look at fairly quickly, then we'll be done with the family level keying. I believe I gave you a specimen that looks something like this. And if we begin again at couplet one, we can do so a little more quickly, I think, at this point. You can see right here is the hind leg, so this is the tibia. You can see the lateral spine. Here's the first tarsal segment. There is the second tarsal segment of the hind leg. So to begin with, let me move it just a little bit. So begin with, right here is the apex of the tibiae. And the first couplet, again, once again, reads, hind tibiae with large apical movable spur. And this, of course, does not have an apical movable spur. So it is not a delphacid. And the second couplet, once again, reads that the second hind tarsomere bears two apical spines, or the second hind tarsomere bears a row of apical spines that the uh, first tarsomere, that's the second tarsomere, and the second tarsomere bears a row of spines. So from here, we proceed to couplet eight. Couplet eight reads, large species, 10 or so millimeters. This qualifies large. I would say it qualifies as large, 10 millimeters. OK, sure, 10 millimeters. Forewing usually colored. The forewing in this case is membranous. opaque and slightly thickened. That's not the case held slightly tectiform. That's certainly the case. Venation usually reticulate. This is a little tricky because if you look at the cells at the apex of the forewing, you will see the wing venation is somewhat reticulate. Anal area of hind wing with cross veins. So we could turn this upside down and look at the apex of the hind wing, which is what you should do. But what I'm going to do is pull out a different specimen. Just happens to have the wing slightly spread. And if you look, this is the hind wing right here. And do those, does the anal area of the hind wing bear cross veins? Well, OK, there's a couple. But that's not what we mean by cross veins. So the answer to that question is no, it does not bear cross veins. We're going to come back to that in just a moment. So we're going to say it is not the family Forgoridae, and then move on to nine. And we're going to have to momentarily, we'll come back and look at something else. Nine asks about the terminal segments of the beak. Let me see if I can quickly find one where you can actually see the terminal segments of the beak. It just so happens that the uh, beak is right here. You can see a couple of stylets sticking out. Here's our terminal segment. It is much longer than wide, and it is as long as the segment that precedes it. This is clearly not a derbid. We'll move on to 10. 10 asks about the wings. Um, being distinctly overlapping at the apex. Something that we've already seen. Let me orient it differently. 
right in here. Whoops. There you go. These wings, the four wings, are not overlapping there. There's the separation. So these wings are not overlapping. It is not an achylidae. Move on. The next couplet asks about the uh, head being projecting. You can see right here the head is de definitely projecting. The vertex is elongate. The next part of this will ask four fronds, two to three median carini. Well, the head is projecting, but it is worth, in this case, looking for those carini, because it's important that if you see those and recognize them for what they are, arrange yours clearly. You will see there's a median carini, there's an intermediate carini, and there's a lateral carini on both sides. So this does have five total carini. Or in brachypterous forms, tegulae hidden, but this is a, a macropterous form. So this is a dictyopherid. 